finish our computations and unit conversions lesson on application questions involving pressure. In the metric system, the derived unit of pressure is called the Pascal, abbreviated capital P and A. And from physics, pressure is being defined as the force per unit area, or we can write it like this, pressure is force divided by unit area. The units of the force are going to be newtons, and the units of area are required to be meters squared. In symbol form, capital P for pressure, capital F for force, and capital A for area. Notice how it's not little a. Small or lowercase a is, is reserved for acceleration. Capital A is for area. So our units of pressure will be newtons per meter squared. But again, we'd like a shorthand notation of a newton per meter squared, and we'll call that a Pascal. So we have the derived unit, and this is on our table of equivalences, that one Pascal is one newton per meter squared. Let's take a look at some examples. Again, we're going to be given that our gravitational acceleration is 9.81 meters per second squared. Force is given as mass times acceleration, and pressure is force divided by area. So let's calculate some different pressures exerted by, in our first example, a force of 1,000 newtons acting on a surface area of 1 square meter. Here's our formula for pressure. P is equal to F over A. Let's enter our given values. We were given that the force was 1,000 newtons and our area was 1 square meter. They are the required units for using um, the pressure formula for the metric system, force in newtons, area in meters squared. So we have that as 1,000 pascals. And again, because this is a relatively large number, we can convert the pascals to kilopascals with our, should be well known, ratio now, 1,000 pascals is 1 kilopascal. We saw this before with 1,000 newtons was 1 kilonewton. Pascals cancel out, and we wind up getting that our answer, our pressure, is 1 kilopascal. And again, we will have, you know, very often we'll be using kilopascal, me megapascals, etc. Let's try and do another example. So this time around, we still have a force of 1,000 newtons, but this time it's acting on a surface area of 10 square centimeters. So we should be stopping and thinking. Our pressure is force per area. But our force should be in newtons. We have newtons, so that's fine. But our area should be in meters squared, and we have square centimeters. So we're going to have to convert the square centimeters to square meters. So there's our 1,000 newtons, and there's our 10 square centimeters. But as I said, we can't leave the centimeter squared here. We need square meters. That's the condition upon using this formula. We know that there's 100 centimeters in 1 meter. And to get the area, we have to square these. So the 100 squared, centimeter squared, is 1 meter squared. If you're concerned about where this unit ratio came from, go back to the lesson for the unit ratio technique for area. You'll actually see this example, this unit ratio, is part of that lesson. We can see how now our centimeter squareds cancel out. And our pressure where the force is in newtons is good and where the area is in meters squared is also good. So now we can just perform our calculation. So when we do this, we're going to get the answer that 1 times 10 to the 6 pascals. But again, this is a pretty big number here, so we'll convert our pascals to megapascals. Again, from the metrics prefix tables, we should be seeing that there's 10 to the 6, or a million pascals, in 1 megapascal. Our pascals will cancel out, and we're left with our answer overall is 1 megapascal. Another pressure question. We have a car tire, and it's inflated to 35 psi, and we want to convert this unit to kilopascals. Now, psi, you may or may not have seen it before. Most people should have at this point. Um, but if you, in case you haven't, it does mean pounds per square inch. So pounds per square inch. And in symbol format, it's LB is the symbol for pounds. And of course, square inches is just the inches squared. So we're going to start with our given measurement unit. 
So there's our 35 PSI. You might be noticing that we're sort of going back to our unit ratio technique here. So, you know, it, it uh, applies to all sorts of different application questions also. That is going to be 35 pounds per square inch. So I want to put it in symbols that I can see maybe on my tables of equivalences. I'm going to look up equivalences and see if I can switch from pounds to square inch to kilopascals. And I actually have an equivalence on my table that says there's 6895 kilopascals in one pound per square inch. So I'll multiply my given value by the unit ratio and the pounds per square inch have to go away. So they're going to show up in the denominator and my kilopascals in the numerator. So let's cancel those out. So there's the pounds per square inch are gone now and we're left with kilopascals. Let's gather our numbers, perform the calculation. Very simple calculation here, just the 35 times the 6895. Notice how we do have kilopascals left. And I've got 241 kilopascals. A couple more application questions for pressure. So again, given our gravitational acceleration, our formula for force, our formula for pressure. Just recap, mass has to be in kilograms. A, we're given the correct units here, meters per second squared. Pressure, force has to be in newtons. Cross-sectional area, capital A, has to be in meters squared. And we want to calculate the pressure on a column whose cross-sectional area is 120 centimeters squared and supports a load of 5,000 kilograms. We should be recognizing again this term load from our force lesson. Load is just another way of referring to the mass. If we didn't recognize that, we can also recognize it from the units, kilograms. Now our cross-sectional area is given as 120 centimeters squared, but again we need to remember that our area has to be in meters squared, so we should anticipate having to change this to square meters. Additionally, since we will be calculating the pressure, we need a force in newtons, and nowhere in here do we have a force listed? We only have a load listed, which is just our mass. So we're going to have to anticipate we have to calculate the force. So let's go ahead and do that. So we don't have the force, only mass. So we're going to calculate our force. Force is m times a. Our mass is the 5,000 kilograms. And here's our gravitational acceleration. Keep the numbers together. And remember the kilogram meters per second squared are considered newtons. Let's go over to pressure now. So our pressure is force over area. Let's put in our force. We have we didn't perform the calculation yet, so let's just carry this forward. So there's our 5,000 times the 981. They are newtons. And here's our area, 120 centimeters squared. But again, we have to stop ourselves and recognize that the centimeter squared should be meter squared. So we're going to, you know, before we go into our calculations, we're going to check our units. We need to change the centimeter squared to meter squared and again we should be getting comfortable with this. We know that there's a hundred centimeters in one meter. To change it to an area we have to square it. So we can see how the centimeter squares will cancel out and we do indeed now have newtons per meter squared. So now we can go ahead and perform our calculation. So there's the 5,000, the 981, a hundred squared is just 10 to the fourth and there's our 120. And remember, this is going to be pascals. Newtons per meter squared are pascals. Our overall answer, very large number, 4.09 times 10 to the 6 pascals. And once again, let's change that to megapascals. So there's a million pascals in one megapascal. Our pascals will cancel out. And here's our answer, 4.09 megapascals.